All right, Dan, we are live. Thank you so much for taking out some time. That's great. Happy to be here. Very excited. Cool, man. So I want to jump right in here. And as you can see from my background, I'm a little Very bit excited cool. to see <laughs> uh, Bambi the Reckoning. Um, yeah. How did you get involved with this film? I mean, how did it come about? So. Oh, sorry, the noise will go in a second. Um, so I... Um... Sorry. You're good. I don't hear anything. Oh, you didn't? Oh, no. this is like a really loud motorbike right Not behind. Oh, well, that's great voice isolation. That's a good um, <laughs> promo for Apple. Um, so I've known Scott and Reese for a while. They actually produced a film I did a few years ago called It Came From Below, um, which wasn't even the first time I worked with Scott. I did another film called Unhinged, um, which did quite well just on sort of the, uh, the VOD and DVD um, market. Uh, which was a that was a remake of the sort of 1982 video nasty film and I've always sort of got on with Scott <laughs> and um and I've edited a few films for them as well so I think they trust me as a filmmaker um and so they know the sort of standards I sort of aim for even though I normally work in sort of or I, each film I've done has sort of grown in terms of budget um so I sort of try to make sure that every project is bigger than the last and and I've been lucky to enjoy that growth with with Scott and with Reese. Um so when this franchise started, uh well when it sort of exploded into a franchise off the back of the success of of Poo One, um I was originally on board just to edit Bambi, but um but because of the scheduling and how that was playing out, they eventually actually said, you know what, would you be interested in directing it? And and obviously said yes. Uh very awesome. very quickly. Oh, I can imagine, man. <laughs> you know, you know, so do you ever like, you know, um, fear like ruining like this, you know, people's like childhood image <laughs> of Bambi? You know what I mean? Because not, not at all. Not at all. You know what? I see it as the um, it's the whole remake thing or you also get it when books get turned into into movies when they're like, oh, my God, you're going to ruin it. Just leave it alone and stuff. And it's like making something new even if it's based off of something that already exists it doesn't stop the previous thing from existing you're you can still absolutely go and enjoy that version of bambi but this is a bambi for a completely different audience really and maybe it's actually a, a bambi for people that loved the cartoon as a kid sure. but now as an adult are like i'm really into horror and now i get to re-experience things i already loved in a new medium that i also now love um so i think it's if anything, bringing it to to more people and to new people. Um, and we hope also it's a nice reminder of how beautiful that original story is. Although obviously ours is based on the book as is Disney's thing. Um, right, 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 but it's that, it's that same story that you're used to. Um, but yeah, ours is more of a sequel, I would say, than a than a complete remake in many ways. But That's you'll see that sort of more story stuff comes out. So like, you know, I read that, um, you know, it's uh, it's sort of based on the 1923 novel Bambi yeah. life in the woods, right? Yeah. So yeah. how was it kind of adapting that? I mean, that's a, that's a fairly old book, you know, it's <laughs> over a hundred years. Yeah. So, I, so basically there was a writer that was already on board before I was on board. So there was a draft that when Scott was originally attached to direct, he had already been working with a writer called Reese Warrington, who's, who's amazing um, on this script. And, the main thing that they wanted to do was was be faithful to the um to how emotional the the book is um obviously you have to find your human characters that are going to be your vehicle through the film but the most important thing was that whereas um who is this big sort of fun extravaganza and it does also have an emotional center. This really has to be built on the emotional center because everyone remembers, you know, the death of Bambi's mother in, in that sort of original story. Um, and, and it's very emotional and, and a bit of a tearjerker. And this sort of needed to be that. Um, and it was finding what is that human story? How can we mirror the emotions of the book with our human characters that are also going to face off against Bambi, essentially? Um, so it was for me, it was bringing um, like a like an emotional truth to 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 it that um, that meant something to me. So for me, it's also it's it's that um, almost realization that your parents aren't superheroes is sort of 
a big part of of what it is and also um that parental desire to look after your kids so it's those two things working in tandem for both the the human characters and the deer characters i think um is what i wanted to bring to it that's awesome man i love it so you know what would you say for you was your most difficult part on this production um what the i I mean, instantly, I want to say the cold, cold nights, because um, sure. we were filming in January in the UK, which no one does. <laughs> um, and I want to say we were, realized why, but we were actually so lucky with the weather. Despite filming all, like, I think every day was night shoots. Um, so that meant finishing at three, four or five in the morning, sometimes six in the morning, um, every single day. And we were actually very lucky despite it being minus three or four degrees because it didn't rain. Um, if it had rained at all, we would have been fucked really. I don't know. Sorry. Sure. I, I, swear. Say, I don't get yeah. it. Uh, yeah. We really would have been fucked because you'd have had a character walking in the woods and then two seconds later it's raining. And then <laughs> a minute later it's now not raining and it just wouldn't have made any sense. I think there was one day it rained and that happened to be a day that we were filming indoors. Um, but yeah, I think also just it was still a short shoot. Like we shot the whole thing in 16 days, wow. which is, yeah, which is nuts. Um, because even though these are sort of bigger scale budgets for low budget films, um, Bambi is slightly different because because there's got to be budget for the big CGI idea. So in practice, that meant that the shooting budget was lower than, say, on Pooh 2. Um, but the spectacle will be no less big because you've got this amazing character um that you'll actually get to see because um if you, anyone seeing the poo 2 screening in the in america will see a clip from bambi um before it plays so um you'll get to see what the deer looks like oh well. man i didn't know that that's epic yeah oh, i'm oh, even more I, excited maybe i'll spoil that oh yeah 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 no it's very <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> i can wait to post it don't worry <laughs> <laughs> um so I was going to bring up, you know, was there any um, like practical effects used for the deer or is it all CG? Um, so there was a practical head that we had and we have okay. a practical hoof, but they're actually they're green screen. So uh, you really would have we would have needed a finalized design and we were still working on the design to have then got that made. The other thing as well, budget wise, it's so expensive to get the actual parts made um that we just didn't have so what we had was these green screen stand-ins so that we could have our characters actually interact with it so the most important thing we i just didn't want people flailing their arms and pretending like they're being attacked and not actually have anything to hit or, sure. or interact with so there is the physical interaction that you'll see um and we had some effects of like you know wind blowing in people's faces um to simulate the breath so sure. it will it will really mesh well together um and we do have those practical elements but the day before filming we basically changed the scale of bambi which meant that the big green cgi heads that we'd made uh the green screen heads suddenly couldn't be used um oh, because no. the vfx team were like yeah the most important thing is it's not bigger than what it's actually going to be. And we're like, oh no, it's, <laughs> we've got two and they're both bigger. Um, so we had to sort of, we still use them as performance references, but we lost, uh, yeah, we couldn't use the the heads in the way we wanted to annoyingly. Uh, but they were they're literally these big green things. I think people have seen them online. Um, that are on like a pole. That's I awesome, think. man. Um, so, you know, I mean, this is probably a question from myself more you know, but like, when can the fans expect the release of the film? And will it also be theatrical like Pooh was? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the plan. So as far as I'm aware, it's going to ever both this film and Peter Pan certainly are going to follow the the same sort of release set, uh, setup as as Pooh 2. So it'll be sort of a limited cinema run in South America, in America still trying to push for the uk we'll see um i know australia does it as well um so yeah international really the um and we're aiming for later in the year the biggest okay. thing would just be the vfx um just how long do they take but our plan is yeah late 2024 um wow, dude that's incredible yeah. i can't wait yeah man and um so will you be involved 
with uh, with Bambi now being included in the upcoming like Pooiverse that they're creating. Uh, <laughs> so the I, I want to take credit for this. I suggested to Reese <laughs> that Pooh rides Bambi into battle. That was my idea. So I guess in many ways I'm already involved. Okay. Um, but uh, but no, I think I think I will suggest stuff. Um, I I would love to be involved in, in maybe some of the story development and stuff. Um, but definitely the big crossover thing is Scott and Reese's baby. Um, yeah. so so we'll see. I'll be involved as much as they'll have me. Um, but yeah, it's exciting to work on a part of it if that makes sense. Bambi being a part of it, being its right. own little mini mini beast. Uh, but then for that to be a part of something else. So I already consider myself a part of it in in many ways. Oh, dude, I I saw the poster for that. And I think it made my entire week. <laughs> I was like, now I can, you know, I could just, you know, just move on. I'm like, this is all I needed to see for yeah. this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's so good. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, like you mentioned about Winnie the Pooh, the uh, Blood and Honey 2. Um, mm. I guess tell us about your work on that film, if you if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was the editor alongside Reese. So so Reese normally edits his own films, um, but wanted me to come on board and sort of co-edit with him, which was a really sort of fun experience. So I was on set. So I um uh I did a whole sort of first pass of the film whilst they were shooting. And then me and Reese basically sat down together and worked on it together, um, taking it to sort of that that next level. Um, so I got to be on set every day. Um, which I'll be honest, being on set of a horror film is sometimes tricky if you're trying to just find a nice, quiet space with a source <laughs> of power, um, because there's normally lots of screaming, lots of carnage. Um, obviously, acting screaming, there's not actually people <laughs> having a problem there. Um, and then, um, uh, and then, yeah, power when you're out in the woods in the middle of nowhere is also sometimes harder to come by. Um, so, it was tough, but it was it was good fun. Um, and it's yeah, it was just such cool, such cool sequences that I got to assemble. Sure. Um, it was honestly, I had to sort of pinch myself sometimes. It was honestly such a cool project to to bring pieces together. Like every day felt like sort of Christmas getting these um these new sequences, uh sequences in to to piece together. Oh man, that's super cool. Um, sorry, so this is a, I think a fun one. You know, yeah. if you could like uh remake reboot whatever uh any film that that you would like what would it be and like you know like in another words like what's like your dream project if you could do anything yeah um i've got a couple you know so scooby doo ooh i would love to do and pokemon i would love to do um both in sort of that sort of dark tone. Sure. Um, don't get me wrong. I would be very respectful with poker. Like Scooby Doo, borderlines on like you know that will have jump scares and all sorts of things. Absolutely. Pokemon would be more. I'm thinking like the Dark Knight type of seriousness. Um, and you, the character designs would be a departure from the original ones. So it would probably cause some outcry. Um, <laughs> but it would be very much like real world Pokemon. Um, and I have a I have a complete outline for it, but I don't think I don't know if they'll ever let me ruin their franchise. But um, but it would be <laughs> honestly, I think it would be so so cool um to have like a really grounded grounded uh world build around that because I love world building. So anything that allows me to do that, I think would be really really cool. Oh man, yeah, that yeah, honestly that sounds that sounds super cool. So. Oh, thank you. So sweet, man. All right, cool. Well, listen, that's all the questions I got. I appreciate you uh, taking out a few minutes to chat with us, man. Oh, no worries. No, thank you. And thank you for um, me. I'll be spreading the word as much as I can about yeah, Poo, about Bambi, about Pooiverse. And man, I'm going to be yeah. all over this. So amazing. Amazing. I appreciate it, man. And no uh, hopefully we can chat again soon. All right. Yeah, no, sounds good. Sounds good. Cheers, all right, man. man. Thanks.